Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. <laughs> Beautiful day out there today. It's supposed to get up in the 50s and love. So if you can all stand, wait for another. Let's get started.
happy to see all of you. Thank welcome to all of you who are joining us online. We are glad uh, that you're here. Uh, let us uh, begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to worship. God, we thank you for this beautiful day. God, we thank you for this wonderful congregation that's here uh, to worship you. God, we pray that you'd send down your Holy Spirit upon this place and upon this people and upon this preacher. God, that you would open our hearts and our minds to your presence and to your word today. That we may leave this place born anew. All this we ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. Standing next to you, 
Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we give thanks to you for all the gifts that you've given to us, and in praise and thanksgiving we offer our gifts to you. Bless the givers and the gifts and those who have not to give. Use our gifts and us to do your work in the world, to spread your gospel throughout the earth, and to bring glory to your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will the children come forward, please? So I brought something with me today, and um, this is my birth certificate. It says Commonwealth of Kentucky, right? That's where I was born in Kentucky, and I grew up in Indiana, and now I'm in Iowa. So March Madness is my favorite time of year. Okay. Amen? Can I get an amen? All right. Yes. All right. All right. So, um, so you can see right there, um, Brian Keith Oliver. July 9, 1975, my mother's name, Marilyn Joanne Harder, that's her maiden name, my father's name, David Thomas Oliver. Um, and so, and, and this is my first of I bet all of you have one of these somewhere, but all of you have, because I think you've all been born, right? I can tell that. Um, and so this this proves that you're born, well actually being alive kind of proves that you're born, doesn't it? But, but you know what? This, this is when I was physically born, my body was born. But did you know that I had another birthday? When I first believed in Jesus Christ, and I was probably about seven or eight years old, when I first believed in Jesus Christ, I had another birthday. My spirit was born. My body was born. And I got this piece of paper, but then my, my spirit was born. And sometimes we call that being born again. When we believe in Jesus, it makes such a change in our life that it's like we've got a brand new life. And so we need to remember that we need to actually believe in Jesus because just, just kind of being born and just kind of hanging out, that doesn't make us a Christian. We have to actually decide to be a Christian by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. And when we do that, the Bible says that we are born again. We have a brand new life. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God, thank you that we've all been born. Thank you that we've all been born. And thank you that we can all be born again. And have a brand new life. And have a brand new life. With Jesus. With Jesus. In his name we pray. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. And also if you have one of these, you can run for president. Good morning again. Good morning. Uh, a couple of announcements. That's the wrong uh, A couple of announcements this morning. Uh, first and foremost, um, the cat survey. Today is the last day to take the cat survey. If you don't take the cat survey, you are. You, if you don't take the cat survey, you have taken a survey. You've just told us you don't care. Right. Okay? Um, that's what you told us. If you don't take the cat survey, you told us you don't care. Um, and not caring is fine. We just will move on. Um, but do take the cat survey. Today is the last day to do that. Uh, you can take it online, wesleyonline.org slash cat. Uh, there's also a uh, library in the computer. Or library in the computer. <laughs> there is a computer in the library. Um, there is a Sunday school class meeting there after this, but I'm sure they won't find you. 
um, coming in, popping in to do that. Um, so, but, but please, please do that. We want to hear from you. Today is the last day to do that. Um, get that done uh, if you haven't gotten it done. Um, so, uh, okay, I can say more about that. Uh, uh, Lenten, Lenten programming, we have our Taze service at 515 in the chapel uh, on Sunday evenings, uh, including this evening. Uh, Men's Lenten breakfast, uh, uh, to, uh, this coming Saturday is at Sweet Lenten, the following Saturday is here at Wesley. Uh, particularly, you men out there, we'd like to have you come and at least come to the one that we're having here at Wesley. If you'd like to help with breakfast, in any way you can contact Don Vic. He's heading that up, or somebody he knows is heading that up. I believe the lab. Um, so later this month, we have a children's program, 26th of March at 10 o'clock, so during the Sunday school hour. Uh, they're working hard on that program. And then on uh, Palm Sunday, uh, we have a breakfast uh, to help raise money for the youth mission trip. Uh, there's details about if you want to come eat. And there's also details there in your bulletin if you'd like to help uh, with, with that breakfast as well. Um, and you can see uh, the POM team for more information about that. Um, speaking of POM, uh, we're uh, launching, or I'm going to say relaunching, a ministry we did a, a while back, um, providing, um, providing household goods for uh, individuals that are moving out of MCSA, setting up housekeeping, um, called the Giving Space. Uh, there's details in your bulletin. If you'd like to help or have more questions, uh, contact Mary Whitaker and her number is there in the bulletin. Um, so what's everybody going to do this afternoon if they haven't done it? Take the cat. Take the cat. Yes. Because the cat is going to go back in the back um, after today. So make sure you uh, take care of that. I have been rather good about cat hunts, I think. <laughs> Throughout this, I mean, I, I think I've been pretty good. So. You know, sort of, yeah. Our scriptures this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Listen to the word of God. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word, of the, Lord, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, we are continuing our Lenten series, Conversations with Jesus. 
Uh, last week we looked at the conversation uh, that Jesus had with the devil uh, when he was uh, tempted in the wilderness. We looked at that in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, the rest of the series is actually going to be in the Gospel of John, uh, who will take us up to the Sunday before Palm Sunday. And we're looking at these conversations, these one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, that seem to really permeate uh, and, and, and really provide the body of the Gospel of, of John. The other Gospels, Jesus spends a lot of time uh, teaching publicly. In the Gospel of John, Jesus spends a lot of time talking to uh, individuals. And so we're going to see that here today. And, and this first conversation, well, not the first, but the first conversation we're going to look at is today we're going to look at Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus. And I know you're all wondering who Nicodemus is. You probably think that Nicodemus is something that helps you stop smoking. Uh, but, but it's not. Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin. The Pharisees were the, one of the strictest sects, the strictest denomination, if you will, in Judaism. Very strict, very, very um, Bible gloss, very literal. Um, you know, just just really, really, really tight. Uh, and not only was Nicodemus a Pharisee, Nicodemus was also a member of the Sanhedrin, and that's a six dollar word uh, that tells you that he was a member of the the ruling class. He was a member of the high council. Uh, not only controlled religious life, understand, but also in in Israel. Uh, there wasn't a separation between religious life and political life. So he was a religious and political uh, leader. Uh, you might call it a Senate, you might call it a Supreme Court, but just understand that uh, Nicodemus was a big deal. Um, and uh, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. Uh, one, one pastor I've listened to says you can remember that as Nick at night. Um, yeah, not my joke. That is not my joke. Um, just so I want you to know. Um, but Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. Um, we, 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 most Bible scholars think that's because Nicodemus didn't want to be seen with Jesus. Nicodemus was curious about Jesus. Nicodemus wanted to check Jesus out, but Nicodemus was, didn't want to be seen with Jesus, because that would cause him a whole lot of trouble with his buddies back at the Sanhedrin. And uh, Nicodemus doesn't even ask Jesus a question that, that's recorded. Uh, Nicodemus doesn't even like make any more. Nicodemus barely introduces himself, and um, Jesus tells Nicodemus that he needs to be born again. Or born from above. The Greek word is anothen. Anothen means uh, from heaven or from above, or it can mean again. Um, just, just suffice it to say that it's a spiritual experience, right? We're all born physically, right? We're all here, so we all had a physical birth. Uh, we all have a birth certificate somewhere um, because we're born. We're born physically. Uh, but what Jesus is saying is that we need to be born spiritually. We're born physically. We need to be born from above. We need to be born spiritually. And that is an internal uh, change that also results in an external change. It check results in a change of uh, behavior. This is an inward and spiritual event, this being born again by putting our faith in Jesus, that we symbolize with the sacrament of baptism. What is a sacrament? A sacrament is an outward and physical sign of inward and spiritual grace. Baptism doesn't make you born again. Baptism doesn't make you born again. It's not magic. But it testifies to something, even when we baptize little bitty babies, it's, it's something that we're saying, this needs to happen, we hope it's happening. By faith, we say it's happening on the inside of the life of this small person because we know that, that their earthly birthday is, is, is not enough to get them into heaven. They have to be born again, Jesus says, to even see 
the kingdom of heaven. Baptism doesn't guarantee that someone will become a believer. Baptism doesn't guarantee that someone will be born again. But we are communicating both its necessity and its availability in the life of every single person uh, when we baptize anyone but particularly when we baptize infants. Because when we baptize older people, we're kind of going on a testimony that something has actually happened inside there. But again, that doesn't necessarily guarantee it, does it? Um, now you may hear people say, you may hear people say that they are a born again Christian. Have you heard people say that? I'm a born again Christian. Um, well, here, here's your answer for them. There's no other kind. There's no other kind of Christian than a born again Christian. To be born again is to be a Christian. To be a Christian is to be born again. Now, what they sometimes mean is that they had a particular kind of experience. They they've heard a particular kind of preaching. They've heard uh, they had a particular kind of church experience that they think everybody has to have in order to be a Christian. And of course, that is not true, right? Lots of different kinds of experiences. And, and, um, and people experience God and experience the new birth differently. But there's only, the, the born again Christians are the only kind that there are. I'll say more about why we maybe get ourselves stuck on that in a minute. But back to Nicodemus. Nicodemus just can't understand this. He just can't understand this. And the reason he can't understand this is because all of his life, his identity has come from being born a Jew. That's his entire identity, is that he happened to have been born at a particular time, in a particular place, among a particular people. See, Nicodemus has status. Nicodemus has privilege. Nicodemus has power and he has wealth and he has position and he has identity. As a matter of fact, religiously, religiously, Nicodemus thinks because of where and when he was born that he is better than everybody else. Now, what do we call that when you, because of where you're born, that you're better than everybody else? What do we call that? Racism. racism. That's what we call that. We call that racism. Depending on the status you're born with to give you some kind of leg up in the world. And of course, racism is the opposite of Christianity. It's the absolute opposite of Christianity. And so Nicodemus is afraid of losing his status. Because he's placed so much importance in, in, in that set of identities, in that bundle of privileges. He's placed so much of, of who he is and how he thinks about himself and who he is in the world. <clears throat> and being born again, being born again means that he has to lay all of that aside. Or he, he's afraid it does, and it does, at least to some extent. He, he, being born again threatens all of that. Because if I'm born again, I might not be born into the status that I am now. Is that why? Is that why so many of us reject the idea of being a born again Christian? If we do, I don't think most of us do, but is that why people do? Because I've got status, I've got privilege, I've got identity. I, I got something when I was born. I got a set of gifts when I was born that other people didn't get. And I don't want to give those up. I'm a cradle Methodist. I've heard people say that. Friends, there is no such thing. If by that you mean that, that I'm a Christian because I was born in a particular time and place into a particular family, that's not true. No one's born a Christian. Now, if you mean I'm a cradle Methodist, or a cradle anything else for that matter, is that I had the extreme gift from God that I was born in a Christian home and raised in a Christian community, that's something to be thankful for. But that's, of course, not enough. 
We have to make the choice. We cannot be born a Christian. We must be born again into Christianity by faith in Jesus Christ. How do you get born again? You get born again by putting your faith in Jesus Christ and receiving the Holy Spirit that he gives you when you put your faith in him so that your life can be changed. See, we think that's the other problem is that we think that, yes, drug addicts and prostitutes need to be born again, but good cradle Methodists don't. Don't we think that? Of course, it's not true. See, the problem is, is that we need to be born again on the inside, each and every one of us, and then the outside follows. We think because we have a cleaner outside than other people, that our inside is just fine. That we're okay. That we don't need this kind of radical transformation that Jesus is calling us to. But we do. We need to be born again. A life change so bad that we call it a new birth that results in a new life. And so the question is, Are we so in love with our sin? Because that's a problem. That's what keeps people from God. One of the things that keeps people from God. We're in love with what we do. We're in love with the things that we do. We don't want to let them go. But at a deeper level, and maybe at a more difficult level, are we so in love with our identity, our status, our privilege, and even our religion. Are we so in love with those things that we cannot let them go for a new identity and a new life in Christ? Jesus calls us to a new and eternal life through faith in him. Because he was lifted up as the as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, he was lifted up on the cross to die for our sins. And he said, Whosoever believes in me shall not perish, but have eternal life. All those who believe in me receive a new life, but they need to be willing to lay their own life aside to get it. And without it, Without this new birth, we cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And so, brothers and sisters, we all need to have a conversation with Jesus about being born again. Let us pray. Dear God, we confess that so often we're so in love with our current life, with our current set of sins and our current set of identities and our current set of privileges and our current set of ideas and preferences. We're so tempted to say, we're fine. We're fine. We're good. We don't, we don't need this kind of radical life change that Jesus offers us. But God, you tell us, you tell us that we need a new life. And to have a new life, we've got to have a new birth. We've got to have a spiritual birth so that we can be part of your kingdom. And so God, help us each and every one of us to put our faith in Jesus Christ and be born again into his kingdom. God, we pray for this church. We pray that you bless us and help us to grow and prosper. Help us to worship and serve you in spirit and truth and serve the world in your name. God, we pray for 
the whole body of Christ throughout the world. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for the United Methodist Church, for this annual conference in our bishop's meeting, for this district and our superintendent done. We pray for our community, our nation, our world in these troubled times. We pray for all the people and places who are in need throughout the world today. We pray for all those that are sick, all those that are suffering, all those that are struggling. We pray for our men and women who serve us at home and abroad. We pray for our military and for our veterans, for our law enforcement, our first responders, for our missionaries and relief workers and our health care workers and all those that serve our community. And God, we pray for our world leaders at every level. We pray for ourselves, our families, our church, our community, our nation, and the whole world with blessings of peace, justice, health, safety, freedom, stability, prosperity, and holiness. And now, oh God, we pray that you would hear us, each and every one of us, as we lift up our prayers to you, either silently or aloud, saying, in Jesus' name, Loving God, you've heard our prayers here this morning, and you hear the prayers that remain silent in our hearts. God, you know our every need, and when we do not know how to pray, your spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. And God, we pray that you hear us now as we lift our voices together in the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to stand and join me in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ. Is, I'm sorry. Start on the wrong page. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Here you see the. we come to communion this morning, communion like baptism is a sacrament, an inward and outward and physical sign, an inward and spiritual grace. It's not magic, but it is, it is a miracle. It uh, won't save you, but it is an expression of your faith that will save you. And so I invite you to come in faith today and experience new birth and nourishment for your new life. As you come forward today, uh, again, all are, all are welcome. I want to say that if you're a visitor with us, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are welcome to have this table today among us from wherever you come. Uh, come down the center aisle. I will offer you a way for you to receive that. 
Uh, step to either side, the circle will offer you a cup, receive that, and then there are waste baskets at, at the far end, either side, uh, for that empty cup, and then return to your seats by the side aisle. Now I'd like to offer you this formal invitation. Dear friends, the United Methodist Church practices open communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who he would love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins, and all who seek to live in peace with one another. And young children are welcome to participate at the discretion of their parents. Therefore, let us prepare ourselves to receive this holy sacrament by confessing and repenting of our sins in silence. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for forty days and forty nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made a covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for forty days and forty nights, you gave us your commandments and made us, made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your company, your prophet Elijah fasted forty days and forty nights, and on your holy mountain he heard your still, small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted forty days and forty nights to prepare for his earthly ministry. When he suffered and died on the cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during forty days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these forty days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. 
poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Friends, all is ready, all are welcome. Come to the table. I also have food free available if, if that is a need for you. Just let me know.
Receive this benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and remain with you always. Let us go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Experiencing grace, exploring truth, expressing love. Amen.